The OAM Network is an independently run podcast and live production company in Memphis, Tennessee. TheOAMNetwork.com. Power to the podcast. Welcome to the Wholesale Real Estate Freedom Podcast, hosted by me, Rico Smith. Glad to glad to have you guys on this podcast today. Um, and one thing that I wanted to say before I start this podcast is one of the main reasons why I started it is to help the masses out there understand the true basics and fundamentals of what wholesale real estate is. And not only that, to let the world know that uh, Mad Paper Coaching is the number one wholesale real estate program out there in the world, period. Um we provide true accountability, and that's something that the real estate educational industry is lacking right now. And I am very, very excited uh, to be able to start this podcast and to help the millions of listeners out there uh, to understand what wholesale real estate is. This is a revolution. Uh, I want you guys to get excited and ready to go. So now today, what I wanted to talk about First and foremost was the story uh, of my background and uh, how I started my journey uh, in wholesale real estate and in the real estate educational industry altogether. Um, I'm very transparent about my background as well. And I want you all to know that uh, I was, you know, blessed to be able to be raised by my two grandmothers uh, and my late grandfather, uh, who was recently killed in the carjacking in 2016 um, here in Memphis, Tennessee. These people uh, were phenomenal in my life. Uh, My mom and dad, you know, they made some little irresponsible choices while I was growing up. And uh, my mother was in the streets for some time. And my father did time in the penitentiary. Uh, And that was a trying time for me because I kind of grew up without my father. But I looked up to my grandfather um, and my uncle as father figures in my life. And, uh, you know, they put the Bible in front of me. They put me in school. And they taught me the value of becoming a successful man in life. Now, during that process, I want you guys to know that, hey, it was great. You know, uh, I was being raised by my grandmother and, you know, I had my father figure of of my grandfather and my uncle. But one of the things that bothered me uh, uh, during this process was witnessing my mom and dad suffer. Okay, you know, I, I was okay, but they was not. And seeing that it drove uh, a deep fire inside of myself, you know, that was immense. And I told myself I wanted to be responsible for retiring my mom and dad, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm 14, 15 years old and I'm seeking out ways to become rich. You know, I always I become infatuated with becoming rich. And so I sought out self-development. OK, I overdosed on personal development. I OD on PD. <laughs> I got that saying from Tony Robbins. But I OD on PD because I figured out if I study self-development, I can learn about the true power of my subconscious mind, uh, which was a God-given ability that God has given us to create our reality. And so I sought out so many books. Uh, I read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, uh, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, you know, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, all of these great people. You know, they transform my mind. You got to remember, guys, I'm 14 and 15 years old when uh, most kids was going out there to see if they can play basketball or uh, try out for the football team. I was motivated to see how I could take this information and actually apply it in my life and see the physical manifestation of some success, not just for myself, but for my mom and dad. And that was my original purpose. And in that study, it led me to learn more about real estate investing, okay, and the power of real estate. And I learned that so many millionaires and billionaires, they they held their wealth in real estate. And I was so excited. I said, man, I, I cannot wait to get started with wholesale real estate. Um, and I learned through the study of wholesale real estate that it was the lowest entry level way to get started. And I said, why not go ahead and, and dive into this thing? So early on, Uh, I started investing in wholesale real estate. Okay, and, you know, one of my leading mentors when I got into the field uh, was actually Dean Graziosi. You know, I read a lot of his books and I took a lot of his 
uh, principles and I applied them. And one of the key things that I learned from him uh, was the power of reverse wholesaling. And that's something that we're going to talk about today. Uh, the concept of reverse wholesaling. That's something that I am very successful in. And that's something that I have taught hundreds and hundreds of students across the country um, how to do. And this is something that will allow you to become a ultimate wholesale real estate investor, um, not just a regular wholesale real estate investor, which is very different. Now, guys, I want you all to know before I continue this podcast that this podcast is being sponsored by yellowletterscomplete.com. OK, yellowletterscomplete.com, one of the leading successful direct mail companies out there. Uh, I've been with these companies for over six years. Um, I know David over there and Zach and Stephanie and Leah. Uh, they're great people over there. They have set, helped me set up my direct mail campaigns numerous amounts of times. And not only that, they have helped me set up successful campaigns for my students that are in Mad Paper Coaching. Um, and we're glad to have them sponsor this podcast. All right. So now. I wanted to talk more about the power of reverse wholesaling, the power of reverse wholesaling. But before we go over what reverse wholesaling is, let's talk about wholesale real estate in itself. What is wholesale real estate? And first and foremost, I want to say the definition of wholesale real estate is basically you're the middleman. OK, I want everybody out there to know right now that. You, as an American citizen, you have the right to control a piece of property with the backing of a purchase contract, okay? So your goal as a wholesale real estate investor is to be able to find a motivated seller, okay? Uh, and once you find that motivated seller, you want to be able to find a great buyer and make it a match made in heaven. You want to bring those two together and you want to collect a nice assignment fee in the end, okay? So once again, you're basically the middleman. And, and yes, this is the lowest entry level to uh, get started in real estate. You don't need a license for this. You know, that's one of the biggest misconceptions out there. Most people say, well, don't I need a license to get involved in real estate? That's not true. You do not need a license. All you need is hustle, uh, some enthusiasm and a lot of relationship building uh, values and stealing yourself. And that's something that I want to talk about. So uh, with Reverse wholesaling, it comes the con uh, the concept of reversing the process, okay? Now, in the real estate educational industry today, you have so many people out there that's uh, preaching the concept of all you have to do is just go out there and find a property first. Once you find that property first, you're going to lock it down with the purchase contract, and then you're going to exhaust yourself to shop it around to find an end buyer. Now, guys, I'm not saying that that doesn't work, but that's one of the most frustrating and difficult ways of getting a successful deal as a wholesale real estate investor. And the reason being is because you have not cultivated any relationships with the expert buyers in your market. OK, that's very, very important. If you do not do that, you're going to come off as a used car salesman uh, to buyers in the area who do not know you. And I think that's very, very important. Uh, if you develop the relationships with the buyers first, you can understand your criteria and you can create a nice targeted marketing campaign um, uh, for your direct mail marketing. OK, you don't want to be just massively marketing into areas where you don't know where the buyers are buying in. OK, that's very important. So uh, I want to actually kick this off with a story uh, that I went through uh, uh a mistake that I would say, and you know, many of these real estate gurus out here, you know, they, they always talk about their come ups and their gains, but they never detail their mistakes. OK, and this is something that you have to learn from. We all learn from our mistakes. And guys, I was there. I was 18. I was 19. I understand uh, how you all feel uh, looking for real estate gurus and real estate coaches to help you. But you did not get that true accountability. You know, you found out that the accountability was just piss poor and it sucked. I was there, you know, I was the bus boy taking all of my hard earned money, looking for these guys, paying them and to only come up short with no success. So one thing that I had to learn was all of the information that I received, I had to sacrifice for. I had to go out there and work hard for. And I'm glad that I went through the trout and error because it was a journey. So, guys, I learned from my mistakes, which is why I'm sharing you this story here. So 
I, I was eager to get started. I was young. I was 20 years old, you know, and I wanted to get my first deal in wholesale real estate. And I would never forget, you know, I did my first direct mail campaign. I did some band design marketing and I got this great lead uh, from an elderly lady. You know, she was downsizing. I think she was 82 years old. I, I'll never forget this. This is something that was pivotal in my career. Uh, she received the postcard in the mail and she she gave me a call. She said, hey, Rico, how you doing? I got this postcard in my mail and I'm looking to liquidate my property. Uh, I want to downsize and I want to move and, you know, into a nursing home. And I said, OK, well, uh, I'll see if I can do that for you. And one thing that I told this lady was I was going to sell her property in 30 days. All right. You got to remember. Not seven to 10. You want to be able to tell your seller that you can close on this property in seven to 10 days if you're doing a cash deal, not 30 or 45. Remember, you want to come off as the expert and you want to come through on your word. If you're taking 30 or 45 days to close, it looks like you're getting a loan, which is one of my mistakes that I made. Uh, the deal was great. I researched the deal. I looked it up. I saw that on the ARV, the property was worth about $60,000. Okay. And I said, wow, this is a great deal. And when I asked her what she wanted for it, she was just looking to get about 20 grand. Immediately, I thought to myself, well, wow, this is a great deal. I looked at the zip code. Uh, it was actually in the property uh, uh, that was located in North Haven here in Memphis. And if you're in wholesale real estate here locally in Memphis, Tennessee, you know that uh, North Haven is, is not a good area, but I didn't know that. So uh, got the property. I started to do my due diligence online and I looked at the comps and I didn't see any comps. Well, that didn't alarm me. I just thought that, you know, if the ARV was good and I got a good spread, it was a good deal. So uh, long story short, I got the purchase contract drawn up, uh, went out there. I took some pictures of the property to, you know, shop it around to the end buyers uh, uh, she was a, you know, perfect, perfect guest. She showed me around the outside. She showed me around the inside. And when I came out, I was eager to get her to sign the contract. She signed it. She looked at me and she said, young man, I hope you can come through and, you know, close on my property. And I remember just leaving, like feeling excited, feeling like I've done something, feeling like I got close from just watching all the videos on YouTube and going to these nice looking seminars with the guy in the suit. I felt like I was getting somewhere. Uh, so Got the contract for 20 grand. You had over uh, 40,000 in equity. I immediately told myself this was a great deal. Uh, so got the deal contracted out, got the pictures. And remember, guys, I had no buyers, no relationship with any expert buyers in my local market first, which was a huge, huge mistake. So uh, First place that I went to shop this property around is I used the daisy chain method, as many of us know, as many of us heard before uh, in this wholesale real estate game. I took the property, put the pictures online, and I put as many buyers um, whom I knew or uh, whom I met previously from going to the MIG meetings just by getting their business card. You know, I didn't shake their hand and actually sit down with them and talk to them. I just got their business card and I kept it going. Uh, sometimes I would get online and look up a few buyers. I didn't give them a call to set up any appointments. I would just get their name and email and put it on the list. And, you know, I would have over 100 buyers on one list. And I thought to myself, I have a good buyers list. <laughs> I, I, I may not know these people, but I have a successful buyers list because it looks like I have a lot of buyers on this sheet, which was a huge mistake, guys. And I took that property and I blasted it out. And I started to get some responses in my email that, alarmed me very, very quickly. Some of the responses was, first, who are you? <laughs> they were like, who, who, who are you? Why are you sending me this email? And uh, I would say, well, my name is Rico Smith. I'm a wholesaler and I'm trying to sell this great property in North Haven. Would you be interested? They said, well, first and foremost, uh, I would like to get a better introduction between who you are. Uh, maybe we can, you know, meet one day. And I said, well, hmm, I didn't think about that. And then next they would say, and North Haven is a bad area. We're not interested. Move on. And I was like, wow. OK, that's a good response. Uh, North Haven isn't good. Let me continue to move on. So uh, more responses came. North Haven is bad. Do not send me any deals in North Haven. I was like, wow. OK, and then I kept getting more responses. Hey, man, if, if you're in wholesale real estate in Memphis, Tennessee, you should know not the market in North Haven. So I just started to get nervous. You know, I was like, wow, man, I've watched everything on YouTube. I went to these seminars and it told me to just find a property. I thought that I could just take my time, go out here and find a property first, 
shop it around and get a deal. And I was like, this is not going to be as easy as I thought. All right, back to the drawing board. So as I go back to the drawing board, I thought about the other option of, well, maybe I can just put it on Facebook, get some responses on social media, and I'm going to find me an end buyer. I know I am. So I, you know, I created a post on Facebook, attention, all real estate investors and wholesalers in Memphis. I got this great deal. 40 to 50% off the ARV and it's in North Haven. So I put the pictures up, put the pictures of the inside up, outside exterior. Buyers would look at it and the comments came. Man, 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 did you not know you are not supposed to be in North Haven? Hey, do you, we don't want any deals in North Haven. Hey, we don't want that property in North Haven. I'm like, man, did I make a mistake by getting a property and showcasing it in North Haven? What is this? Uh, I started to get confused. I started to get frustrated. And I started to get nervous. Now, guys, you got to remember on the contract, I put on there 30 days to close. Okay. Now, throughout this process, days are going by. Okay. You got about 25 days, 20 days. You know, here comes 19 days. And so as I'm getting this negative feedback from my emails and, and, and Facebook, I get a phone call. And we all know who the, the, the phone call is from. It's from the elderly lady. And she's giving me a call. I'm like, hey, how you doing? She said, hey, young man, uh, I, I just wanted to give you a call and talk to you. I know I haven't heard from you in some days. Uh, is everything going okay? Are you on the right track to selling my house? And it was so hard to tell this lady everything that I was going through. And I was so excited to get the deal done. I still told her that I was. I said, yes, ma'am, everything is great. I'm going to give you a call in a few more days when I'm ready to close. And I'll see you at the closing table. And I hung up my phone. And guys, remember, no matter how hard it is in real estate, tell the truth. No matter how ugly it's going to look, you want to be an open and honest individual uh, when it comes to things that's hard to tell the truth about. So hung up my phone and I got back to the drawing board. I said, you know what? Maybe I could take this property, put it on Craigslist. Get some views there. I know it's 4 million people that get on there every single morning and look at this. So hopefully I can get some hits. And that's what I did. Uh, I put the thing on Craigslist and man, the responses kept coming. Hey, this is a great deal you have, but it's in North Haven. We're not interested. And I was just like, wow, the responses are, are negative. What did I do? I'm like, why is everyone telling me to do a method that doesn't work? You know, I started to have self-doubt within myself. I started to you know, not believe in the concepts. I was like, does wholesaling even work? You know? Now, my last option was to create a flyer, in which I did. I put the property on a flyer. Uh, I put the inside pictures on there. I put the exterior pictures on there. And uh, I said, I'm going to go to the MIG, MIG meeting here, which is a local uh, real estate investor meetup here in Memphis, Tennessee. I said, I'm going to go to this meeting and hopefully I can find an in buyer. And guys, this was one of the most hardest things that I ever had to do because now I had to get over the phobia to approach people who I did not know. And I took this flyer and I went and I said, hey, guys, I got this great property. I went to the area where the buyers were. I was like, hey, guys, I got this great property in Memphis. Um, the ARV is over 60K. I got it on the contract uh, right now and I'm looking to get 25 for it. So I had the contract. At 20, and I was looking to sell it at 25, guys. I only wanted to make five grand out of this deal. And every single buyer there turned me down. Okay. It was a, a third unsuccessful attempt at getting this property sold. And I was just like, wow, this is, a, I'm a complete failure. You know, I, I can't get a wholesale deal done. And this is just frustrating. So, one, the one thing that I did uh, was, I ripped the flyer up. I was like, this thing is not going to work. You know, my self-doubt just came. Uh, the days just, you know, they went away. You know, 10 days, eight days came, seven days came. And it was time to actually go to the closing table uh, to meet the lady at the closing to let her know that I was not going to sell her property or get her property sold. So it was closing day. And I'll never forget it. I, I had to sit down at a conference table. And one of the things that I, I'm happy I did back in the day was I went to Saddle Creek Title and I was able to meet Kay Wheeler, which is the head closing attorney there. And uh, before I went out to do my marketing, I just wanted to know how was I supposed to get these contracts uh, to a closing? And she sat down and told me. 
And that was the best thing I ever did because if I have did not know K, my reputation probably would have been completely ruined uh, in the Memphis area. But I sat down, and I looked at the, at, at the elderly lady, and, and she said that, you know, hey, baby, you don't look too happy today. I'll never forget it. And I said, well, I got some bad news. And, you know, at that moment, I had to take every inch of integrity in myself to let this lady know uh, I did not have an Ian buyer and I was not closing on her property today. And I looked at Kay before I sat down and she said, well, Rico, uh, I have the wiring instructions. I got the disbursement uh, details here, but I do not have your buyer's information. You know, uh, you did not provide me with the buyer's info. Is everything OK? And I looked at Kay and I said, well, Kay, I do not have a buyer for this house. And immediately as I said that um, the seller jumped up out of the seat. She looked at me. She said, what do you mean? You don't have a buyer for my house, young man. She said, you looked at my eyes and you told me you were going to close my property. She said, I have to move out of my home and I have to transition into a nursery home. She said, how could this have happened? And I just sat there and I apologized. You know, I man, I'm, it was it was so emotional to to see everything that was going on. And, and Kay kind of jumped up and she said, well, ma'am, you know, I, I apologize for this happening. You know, he's a young man that's just trying to start his wholesaling career. He's made a huge mistake. Maybe I can see if I can help you out with some other alternatives. Um, I know a little bit more uh, than than he does in the investor side. So maybe I can find you a buyer. And I'm so happy Kay did that. And she basically calmed the entire situation down. Uh, you know, at that moment, I just thought it was over with for my, you know, reputation. Memphis is, is very small, guys. So everything gets out pretty quick. You know, there's a saying that it says that uh, it takes 15 years to build a reputation, um, but only 15 minutes to ruin it. And I, I remember that. That was just echoing in my mind as a young, you know, uh, aspiring wholesale real estate entrepreneur because that was something that I read in the self-development books. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I was able to, you know, have the elderly lady look at me and she she uh accepted my apology and she you know went on and proceeded with Kay. Uh Kay actually helped her out to find somebody to actually buy that property in North Haven, which was was very shocking because it's a very hard area uh to find buyers to buy houses in. But when I left that office, I had my buyer, Kurt Davis from Buy Memphis Now. Uh, he's actually here uh, locally in Memphis, Tennessee, and he's one of the buyers that has been with me for over eight years. And he's, you know, helped transform my life. And I never forget it. He was out there and he was like, man, I, I kind of overheard everything that happened out there, but you can't do that, Rico. He said, uh, you can't move in that fashion, man. You, you have to transform what you are doing to separate yourself from 90% of the other wholesalers out there. OK, and I, it, it rung a bell in my mind. He said, you have to reverse the process. Stop looking for properties first. And I said, OK, well, if I'm not looking for houses, how am I going to wholesale real estate? He said, you need to find the expert buyer first and to cultivate a genuine relationship with them. I said, wow. OK. He said, if you do that then one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to have a better understanding of the criteria in your local market. That way you won't waste money on your marketing campaign. He said, why invest in a marketing campaign if you don't know where the areas are, uh, where the major buyers are buying in? He said, it doesn't make sense, does it? I said, you're right. He said, if you take your time to develop relationships with the buyers, get to know them on a personal level, then your success is going to be reached much faster. And I said, well, I need, I need to do that. And so that's something that I implemented. If I sat down with the buyer and understood their criteria, you know, if they wanted a three-bedroom, two-bath property, if they focused on two-bedroom, one-bath homes, if they were in the market for apartment buildings, if they were looking for condos, I knew that up front, and I can actually tailor my marketing campaign to meet their criteria. I mean, the bells were just ringing and I was like, wow, this is dynamic information. And guys, this is why I'm so excited uh, to, to do the podcast, to let you know the truth uh, and, and give you the real way to move forward in your wholesale real estate business. It's so important. If I would have known this early on, I would have never encountered that mistake. But I'm glad I did, like I said, because I learned. All right. Now. I had to sacrifice, guys. OK, I had to sacrifice and, and, and sacrificing in business is important. It's actually one of the laws that I teach in Mad Paper Coaching. OK, 
okay? It's, it's the backbone of, 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 of what I go by, you know, and I'm big on self-development, okay? Before we talk about real estate in my class that I have here in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, every single Saturday from one to three at the U of M, we go over the laws. And, uh, you know, I got these laws from, from my mentor, Bob Proctor, and I also have, have wrote a book about them, uh, which is here. It's actually called Power Moves, 11 Laws of Manifestation and How to Unlock the Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And I think that this book is very phenomenal and it's very powerful. You can actually purchase this book on Amazon.com. Um, and like I said, one of the laws is sacrifice. And I had to make an immense sacrifice. I had to stop focusing on the money. You know, before it was all about the money. How much money can I make in real estate? How many, you know, nice cars and a big old house can I can I obtain by doing real estate? But guys, that wasn't the lesson that I needed to uh, focus on. I needed to change the concept. I needed to change my direction. And that was building relationships, building successful relationships. So from that day, I left that closing office and my main focus for the next five months in the process of developing my wholesale real estate business was building successful relationships with the expert buyers. Okay. And many of us don't know how that looks. We're kind of confused on it. We don't, you know, we think that, okay, well, we could just go on Google, get the name of a buyer company and get the email and just send them deals. It doesn't work that way. Okay. You have to make a sacrifice and get over the phobia, get over the fear of meeting people. You have to learn how to shake hands and look into people's eyes and letting them see your enthusiasm so you can change your life. You got to think about this. You know, many of us have ambitions on breaking generational curses and, you know, ob obtaining millions of dollars. Do you guys understand how hard that is? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we understand. It's easy to, to say it, but do you understand the amount of work that that is going to take? All right. You have to literally go out there, take your time and have a true aim of really being intentional on building relationships in your business. And that means you, you're not going to have to make money in that five month period. You can't have that aim. What's more important, making quick money or developing a relationship with a real multimillionaire? I mean, I'll wait, guys. You let me know. What I had to do was take myself out of my comfort zone. Find the addresses of where these real estate millionaires were. Go meet them. Sit down and develop the criteria. How you doing? My name is Rico Smith. I'm a wholesaler here in Memphis, Tennessee. And I wanted to just sit down with you today because I know that you're a real estate investor here in Memphis. I see that you've been investing here for over 15 years. From your research, you know that this person has been in the local market for over 15 years. Okay? So you're dealing with the expert. He knows a lot about real estate. And you also know that this is an accredited millionaire, not just some Joe Blow who says he buys houses. <laughs> it's a lot of them in Memphis. Trust me, I've been through that. You want an accredited person who really has a million dollars in his account that can close on a property in seven to 10 days. These are people that's going to shape and transform your life. You don't want to hang around people who are not trying to obtain anything higher. You want to surround yourself around influential millionaires that can help you. All right. And these are going to be the buyers. So when you're sitting down with them, if you're at home, you want to be able to research the companies. You want to call them and you want to set appointments and you want to meet them physically. You don't want to be like 90 percent of the millionaires that hide behind the laptop that sets up appointments through emails and never make any physical contact. They just think that they can just do that you know, hiding in their bedrooms at home and they think they're going to be a millionaire in wholesale real estate. It's not going to happen. All right. So get intentional, get outside your comfort zone, find out where the expert buyers are. See if there are accredited first. All right. Figure out what they're buying. And then once you do that, now you can set up a targeted marketing campaign for your area and have a successful direct mail campaign out there. Or whatever marketing outlet that you're doing, whether it's banded signs or driving for dollars, door knocking, cold calling, whatever. You know what areas to pinpoint. One of the values of, real, of wholesale real estate and especially reverse wholesaling is you're going to be able to get the zip codes from the buyers. 
Imagine that. I get it so many times. Rico, how are you a real estate coach and you can help somebody in New York City? Or how can you help somebody in Los Angeles if you never did a deal there? Easy. We're going to find the buyers first that's been there for years that has been specializing in buying residential property. They're the experts. If you give me the zip codes that they buy in, I, as your coach, can help you set up a successful direct mail campaign. I don't care if you're in Idaho, Delaware. I don't care if you're in Virginia, Louisiana. We have 300 students nationwide, and I've helped many of them set up successful direct mail campaigns. All right? So once that happens, it's like it becomes easier for you now. But in the process of cultivating a relationship you must continue that process. When you close a deal with the buyer, the relationship doesn't stop. If a millionaire has, has, has bought a property from you, one thing you want to do is show them love. Give them a gift. I mean, if it's their birthday, make sure you don't forget it and you give them a call and say, hey man, I just want to wish you happy birthday. Thank you for everything you've done for me in my life because without you, I would not be able to pay my bills. I would not be able to put food in my kid's mouth. I would not be able to help myself get out of my rut. And I appreciate that. Once again, what you're doing is you're separating yourself from everybody out there that's blinded by money. You know, this is a money driven society. And guys, don't get me wrong. <laughs> of course, we are in the game to make money, but it's only a scorecard in the physical. It's only a scorecard. It lets you know if you're doing good. The real riches are made when we Build intentional relationships with human beings on earth that's everlasting, whatever it is that you're trying to, you know, succeed in, especially wholesale real estate, guys. And I, and I can't stress this enough, you know, and this is something that I go over and over and over uh, again in my classes and with, with my one on one clients and madpapercoaching.com. It's key and it's, it's you know, it's something that's going to transform your business like no other, you know. I've been listening to, to a lot of podcasts out here lately, guys, and I, and I love them. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to start my podcast to, to bash other people's podcasts. But in the real estate educational industry, we need to provide more accountability and we need to be more truthful on the process. We need to just stop coming up with quick selling information and come up with something wholesome that's going to help these people that gets into the business. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm breaking and eradicating that bull crap out here. All right. And. I am so excited to just tell you guys about the things that I do each and every single day in my business and to tell you guys the things that I do for my clients in Mad Purple Coach. And I mean, it's just phenomenal. And reverse wholesaling is, is what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, now, another thing when it comes to building relationships with your buyers, you know, you know, beyond giving them gifts when you close a deal or when they purchase a deal from you, what you want to do is maintain contact. OK, maintain contact. And when I say maintain contact, that means that you're not just going to hear from a buyer every so often. You're not just going to hear from them every blue moon. If you're just starting in the wholesale real estate business, you want to keep in contact with your buyer buyers each and every single day. You want to give them a call because you may need some information or you may need some resources to leverage. You got to leverage your relationship when you have uh, uh, buyers under your belt, guys. It's very important. If you don't have access to the MLS, that's what the buyers are for. When you set up your first inspection on a property, if you do not know how to estimate the repair on a home, then guess what? The buyers are going to teach you. The first day that you have an inspection for the buyer, when he comes look at it, and, 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 and you don't know how to, re, you know, fix a house and you don't know the cost of, of material that's needed. You don't know the labor uh, that's needed to uh, that's on the house. You don't know anything. You need to leverage the knowledge off your expert buyer and follow him through the process. You're going to learn about roofing. You're going to learn about flooring. You're going to learn about AC units. <laughs> you're going to learn about uh, sheetrock. You're going to learn about concrete. You're going to learn about landscaping. You're going to learn about financing. You're going to learn about everything if you do not know that. Guys, we make things so difficult. You know, I was talking to some people the other day and they were like, I, I don't know how to estimate a house. I don't know how to fix a house. And I asked them, I said, well, do you know an expert buyer in your local market? Do you have a relationship with the buyer? And the first thing that they say is no, but I do have them on my email list. <laughs> Guys, we got to do better th than that. And we got to go above and beyond uh, if we want to be successful in wholesale real estate. Okay. Now, uh, this podcast 
one of the reasons why I started this podcast was, of course, to eradicate the uh, the misinformation that's out here in the wholesale real estate industry. But I wanted to help that person that's out there that feels like, you know, they can't make it out of their situation because of the pain that they're going through in life. And, and, and many of us are. Everybody deals with personal pain. And, you know, I had to actually overcome personal pain in my life. And that was me dealing with the loss of my late grandfather. Uh, his name was Eddie Walker. He was 83 years old and he was killed in a carjacking. Um, and that actually, you know, it transformed my life. And, you know, I had a I had a choice. Uh, I, I could have went left. You know, I could have went uh, depressed. Uh, I could have lost my faith in God totally. And I just could have, you know, given up in life. But I didn't. I had to go back on what my grandfather was telling me when he was alive. And he would always say, uh, hey, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. And, you know, when I leave, you're going to have to be a man and, and, and take care of your mom. And that's something that I want to uh, do. You know, I, I want to take what grandfather told me, turn my pain into triumph and continue to shine through madpapercoaching.com and fulfill his legacy. And I think that's something that uh, I'm doing right now. Uh, so, guys, if you're going through your pain out there, if you feel like uh, you're coming coming from a poverty stricken situation or if you're not in a poverty stricken situation and you're just lacking self-development, you don't know how to uh, succeed. You don't know how to be persistent. You don't know how to be consistent. You don't know how to write goals. You lack planning. Uh, you don't know how to host a real estate properly. This is what this podcast is for. All right. This podcast is for you. I am known for giving away a lot of free information. And with this podcast, I'm able to do it, guys. I'm able to connect with you and I'm able to build with you. And I'm able to give you real values that's going to allow you to become successful in this industry. Um, this was a very exciting podcast for me to do. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to reveal the wholesale real estate uh, concept to you guys. Uh, now, remember. Reverse wholesaling is dynamic, okay? It's revolutionary. It's something that a lot of these so-called gurus are not promoting. The only thing they want to do is bottle up some information and sell it to you. Well, guess what? Today is the day that we're going to break that paradigm. You're going to utilize uh, reverse wholesaling. You're going to implement it in your life, and you will have success. Uh, guys, I, I want to appreciate, I want to say I appreciate you for joining the Wholesale Real Estate Freedom Podcast tonight. Uh, we're going to have this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, and Google Play. So it's going to be out there to the millions and millions of people out there in the world. And guys, please uh, give me some feedback. Let me know if you like the podcast. Uh, give me some ideas on what you would like for me to talk about. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the other side. Perfect. Perfect.